Yay, I think we're live. I hope we're live. Hi, Jamie. Okay, a couple more things I'm setting up, and we will wait on a few people to get in. Hey Louise. Hi Joan. Hope you guys can hear me. Yay! Good, good, good. I did some adjustment on it, so hopefully it's better for you guys that are on PCs or laptops and um, still working for mobile. All right, let me open up my last little bit of stuff here. For you guys. Hi, Miss Diana, your first ever. Yay! Well, welcome aboard. All right, guys, I'm going to play the intro and we're going to go ahead and get started. And a quick shout out to Miss Naomi of EJ's Fun Prints. Um, she is a YouTuber and she is going to be interviewing me um, on June the 9th, I believe. So I'll get you guys more information on that soon. This is tonight's project and I'm going to show it to you here in just a moment. I'm just going to show it to you really quick in the... Uh, design space canvas. If you are a Kofi or Patreon supporter or you're on the cutie collector level on YouTube or higher, you have access to this file over on craftingwithaprilco in the 2020 supporters tab. So that will be there for you and I just want to point out in that file you're going to find the file looks a little big. Let me just drop these groups down so we can get to it. I have some hidden stuff in here because there's two ways to make this um, chipboard shelf and let's see should be getting there soon well I said it was in there there it is it's at the top I'm gonna unhide this and then we'll un right here these pieces this is uh, for plan B if you're gonna cut these pieces and I will explain them in a moment you don't need these pieces, okay? You don't need, oops, that should be grouped anyway. Um, you will not need these pieces here. I'm gonna group all of that. If you opt for option B, and I will explain what option B will do um, when we put it together. So either or, but not both, okay? Hey, welcome, Jamie. So 
option A, option B, and I'm going to hide B in there again. Oops, I hid A. I'm going to hide B. There it is. I'm going to hide that and save it since I just grouped option A. You will need all of these pieces. I have attached these pieces right here, guys. They need to be cut in that order because you don't want to do what I did and forget to flip your paper over. So I went ahead and set those up and attached them so that they would cut on one page, a uh, 12 by 12 sheet of paper, and you would be fine. Now, I did not put a score line down this piece here or this piece here. If you want to do that, you can, and you'll see why here shortly. I just didn't, because I'm cutting chipboard and everything else, it takes a while to, a little while longer to cut it than it does other materials. And I didn't want to have to fool with swapping out my knife blade for a scoring wheel just to put a straight line score down that piece because we can fold that in half pretty easy on our own and it's really not necessary. So let's pop over and see what we're going to make. Yay, here we are. Let me move my keyboard out of the way. So I've, you guys have been asking me for a display shelf, and this is what I came up with um, to take up less space in my craft room. Now, it's probably going to be hard for me to get this whole thing on camera, um, but let me see if I can pull my photo up for it uh, and show it you that. Um this will hold your Nouveau drops or your stickles, and it won't take up as much space. Um, you can set it on a shelf or, or on a small area, a worktop. You can have it on your desk. It won't take up a whole lot of space. Let me find that photo so that you guys can see that. There it is. Okay. So it works sort of like this. You can use it at craft shows. If you do craft shows and you have stuff that you want to sit up and display. Um, you can use it for small things there. Um, so tons of little uses for this. I forgot, I think it was Patty who asked me for one that would hold Nouveau drops, and this one will. Now option B for this, is you can see all of my shelves are the same length on this. Option B makes this shelf one inch wider than option the top, and then two inches on uh, bigger than the top shelf on this third. So it kind of graduates down. But remember, when you do that, it's going to take up a wider area. Oops, I forgot to transition over and show it to you guys. Uh, it's going to take up a wider area. So option A has all the shelves the same size. And option B is going to make this shelf in the center an inch longer than the top and this one two inches longer than the top. Instead of fitting into a nice square area, it's going to take a little more space. So let me pop over and show you guys that real quick, and then we'll put it together. And you can see it here. Like I said, it will hold Nouveau Drops. It will hold several things, um, even your Cricut Cuties. So if you're collecting Cricut Cuties, it will hold those if you want to display those as well. And it will fit on your desk. So super fun. And you can put things in behind it. Got tons of space. And it sits level. It doesn't rock. It doesn't shake. It isn't flimsy. And you're not going to believe how easy it is to put together. So the first thing that you want to do when you're cutting your chipboard is you want to put this on your mat. Okay, this is the two millimeter. You can use the 1.5 to mask. Your shelves may not be quite as tight, but I'll show you uh, what to do if that is the case. But I used a 2.0 for this. You're going to tape it down on all four sides with your masking tape on a purple mat. And then after it cuts, guys, don't peel from this edge this way because it will make your chipboard peel. Peel from the inside out to get rid of your tape on those edges. And then you won't damage your chipboard. But if you try to pull it back the other way, you're going to peel right here. 
and you don't want to peel it because then it kind of frays and it doesn't work well. Now I ink the edges of all of mine and to ink the edges you can go through let's see did I do this when I did I just used an ink pad and I just went around all the edges to ink it just to give it a finished look you don't have to do that if you want to do that super simple super easy and don't pay attention to this I ran I dropped it and ran over it with my chair and hopefully I'm going to be able to to fix it and use it um, and then right here my ink pad wouldn't quite get in this little V right here so all I did was take a Copic marker close to the color this one happens to be black instead of blue and then just go right down into this V right here and you can you can cover it with that next you want to take all of your shelf pieces and then you want to put your panels on your panels are the exact same size as your shelving pieces. And the reason I did that is just so that there wouldn't be any chipboard edges, especially if you inked. And occasionally when we do that, you can get your paper off just a teeny tiny bit, or it may be a little teeny tiny bit bigger than the other. And I'm just placing that on there, and then I'm taking my applicator tool, and I'm just going to smush that glue out. Okay? And then I'm going to flip it over, and you can see I've got just a teeny tiny edge right there because I got up my paper off just a slight little bit. Just going to, I'm on my cutting mat now. Just going to take my true control knife and run right down that edge and get that off of there. I think I missed. My knife may be dull. There we go. It may be a little bit dull. But you can trim that off. And if you don't have a true control knife, you can always use your scissors and just go in and trim it off if it is bothering you. There it is. I did cut it. Just, there we go. Get it loose. Okay? And then you can clean that up that way. Then we're just going to flip it over. And don't pay attention to the ink on my hands because this is handling these pieces before it was really dry. I just didn't want you guys to have to sit and watch me ink all the pieces and do each and every piece of these shells because they're all, all three are done exactly the same. I'm just going to put that on there, get my applicator tool, smush that glue out to the edges. I'm using art glitter glue. Make sure whatever glue that you're using, you don't use a ton of glue. You don't need a ton of it. Chipboard, oops, don't cut into your actual shelf. Um, chipboard can be finicky. And if you get it too wet, it will swell. And we don't want a bunch of swelling on it. So be don't be generous with the glue. Be stingy, okay? You can even use spray adhesive on your pieces and then stick them down, but you're not going to have any wiggle room, okay? So just saying, make sure that your adhesive, if it is a water base like Art Glitter Glue is, you're, you use it sparingly. So you've got three of those, and you're just going to cover them all and then set those to the side. <clears throat> then you've got... These are the two pieces I said that I didn't score. All I did was fold them right down the middle. And if they're off a little bit, not going to hurt a thing. Doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. Okay. Um, you want to fold one with your pattern to the outside and one with your pattern to the inside. You have an outside corner and an inside corner. Okay. So you just want to fold them opposite. Doesn't matter which one you fold. You're going to take your first one. And after you've folded it, you're using the outside corner. So you want your the side that you don't want to see. Yay, Susan, thank you. She's a mover and shaker. So you're going to take hey, you your glue you right here. And welcome our, our newest, newest channel, channel member. member. Thank Yay. you for becoming a member of my YouTube channel. channel. Did that one come across too loud, guys? I just happened to see that one. Hopefully that that's not as loud as that music shouting hey and scaring everybody. Of course, 
that was my own voice, so that might scare you too. <laughs> so I'm just gluing one side of that, and it is a little bit long, and that's perfectly fine. We're going to line it up, and then we're just going to trim it off. We're just going to stick it to the outside edge of one of your pieces here. And it's overhanging a little bit there and a little bit here, and that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to smush it down, make sure it's right up on the edge. And I like to take my bone folder and then just run it down that edge while I hold it. Okay? That's all I'm doing. Just run it down that edge. And I'm going to flip it over. Use my applicator. Let's smush out that glue. And I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off that edge. You can use your true control knife too if you prefer. Just cut it off right there. Next, you want to take your glue and I'm going to run a bead right down the edge of that chipboard. And I'm going to take this and bring it in there. Just going to rub it in. Just going to turn it over and we're just going to put glue all down this edge. And then I'm just going to put a little tiny bead right on the top. Don't need much. You're going to take your second piece and you're going to make sure that it's good and square at the top and at the bottom. I'm just going to push it on there. I'm just going to flip it over so that I can work it just like I did that first one, but we're making a corner out of it. Now you guys aren't going to be able to see this, and I apologize. I'm just going to lay this over the edge of my desk so that this is on the top of my desk, and I'm going to run my roller right over it. Just to smush my glue out. In the side of your table or your desk, We'll hold that, okay? And don't worry, it's going to seem a little flimsy right now. That's fine. Next, you want to take your inside corner, the one that we folded with our pretty pattern to the inside. Or not our pretty pattern, because both side patterns are pretty, but the side that we want to show. And we're going to glue both sides. And that's why these are a little bit long, guys, so you have holding space because it's just easier to glue these when you can hold them and work with them and then just trim them off than it is to try to slide them and get them exactly in place. Now I'm just going to run a bead of glue right down that center, right down the corner. It's all right if it gets over there. It's going to get covered. But right down in the middle, I ran a bead of glue. Now we're going to take that piece and Make sure that it covers all the way up at the top. Take your bone folder and just smush it down. Distribute that glue. It's all right if it gets on this. Okay. And just flip it over and rub the other side. Oh, it did have an echo, Susan. Okay, I'll work on it. Yes, um, my chipboard, guys, I don't let mine cut the entire time. It says 24 passes. You don't, I, I, I've never needed that many passes on my chipboard. Um, chipboard is funny. It is like a cardboard. Well, it is cardboard, but it's a dense, heavy cardboard. But it will, if you're doing a lot of curvy, intricate lines, the knife blade doesn't pivot that way. Um, and it can chew it up. So if you're doing a bunch of really, I mean, big curves are, are fine. But when you get to those teeny tiny curves, they don't do well. And you can see 
these are really thin. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, they are 0 0.092, these openings are. And I had no problem cutting them, but they're straight lines, okay? If I were trying to do some kind of teeny tiny 0.25 circle, it's not going to cut. It's just going to chew that stuff up. But when you have nice straight lines, you can get pretty intricate with your chipboard. And it's going to cut faster if you don't have those curves. Straight lines cut faster with the knife blade. I think the longest I had to do, and now I have cut several things with this knife blade. I've cut a ton of chipboard with it. Um, I started out with eight passes, and I cut two sets of these, um, and I cut other chipboard projects. By the time that I got to my last shelving pieces, um, I think these made 12 passes but I still didn't need 24 and they were cut completely through. If your chipboard isn't cutting through then then you probably need to basically change the blade. Now while this is still damp and still drying just a little bit I am just going to kind of pinch it. I'm putting a little force on it guys. Don't put a lot of force because you don't want to split your paper back here and it will split if you put too much force. But I'm just giving it just a little push in. Not much. Just to make sure that it's good and stuck and nothing's going to pop apart. Just a little bit of pressure. You're not trying to fold it or anything like that. Then you're going to get your pieces and if you cut them correctly, like I have them laid out, you're going to have two inside pieces and two outside pieces. Because if they're not cut correctly, then, or you flipped your paper over, you're going to end up with something like that. That's not going to work. So if it's not fitting, like it doesn't fit here, that's the piece that goes on the outside. So don't panic. Just make sure you have the right one in there. And then we're just going to go right up to the edge. I'm just going to run a bead of glue right up on that edge of that paper right here. Pay attention to your edges and your corners. That's the most important area. And I just put a little bit in the other areas. And I apologize that I wasn't able to go live last night, guys. I had a dental emergency that I had to attend. I lost a implant post on my back molar. And it tried to abscess on me. So you're just going to lay that in there. And again, if it hangs over just a little bit on this front edge, it's okay. And it's because we put that paper in there because they are cut all to the exact same size. And you can see I have a little bit hanging off here. And again, I'm going to play this because of the way that it's made. You can see that piece right there. Because of the way this is made, I'm just going to lay it over my desk and on my mat, and I'm just going to trim it with my true control knife. Just going to cut that paper off. I apologize, you guys can't see that. But that's all I did, was just run my knife right down the edge and cut that off. And I'm going to do the same with the front edge. Let me see. Maybe I can get you. That's about as far as it's going to let me go. So I'm just running that true control knife right down there along that edge to clean the paper off. I need a new blade on that thing. And I am using, while I change this blade out, I am using the Garden Blossom Deluxe Paper guys from Cricut. And in, in case any of you have a true control knife and you haven't changed the blade, you're going to unlock it. 
and then I put my old blade in here usually and then pull this out push that in till it clicks lock it back and you're done super quick and easy so let me just trim that and if you have not gotten a true control knife guys I'm telling you that is the best tool that I have in my craft arsenal so all I've done was just trim that up now, I'm not going to bother trimming all the others I'll do that later um, I missed a place, didn't I? Uh, I'll trim all these later. I'm not going to make you watch me trim all of those, but that's how I do it, just so it all fits and it's nice and flush. Then we're going to do one to the inside. Oops, don't want to get that in there. And it doesn't matter if you're using the damask. Guys, you don't even have to put paper on these. You can cut the chipboard, color the edges with your ink, ink your edges, and then stamp. Stamp them. Use some stamps that you have in your craft arsenal. Stamp some stuff on there and um, make it pretty. I promise you this does fit. My other one fit perfect. Let me. I think I wiggled it a little bit. I'll live with it. And then again, you're just going to trim off any excess. I ran out of room on my mat, didn't want to cut into my desk. Okay, so then you're going to place your outside pieces on there. Oops, I, for I keep forgetting that edge on both of them. Oh, I did cut it. It just didn't pull off. Okay. It was cut. It was just hanging on. So then we're just going to put these on the outside. And don't worry about in there, the paper that's in there. And you'll see why. It, it's not going to matter. It might, but I doubt it. You can always trim it with your knife as well. Get that out of there. I've got mine hanging over just a little bit more than I want. And that's because I'm not taking my time for the camera. Taking up time. I actually, for those of you who know that I've been dieting, I am almost at that 27-pound goal of weight loss. I'm just going to lay that one on there. Get it flush at the top. And this one you shouldn't have to trim. This one should fit perfectly fine because it's to the outside and not the inside. I just knew that if I made one a teeny tiny bit smaller that there was a bigger chance of getting them mixed up and cutting the wrong one or gluing it to the wrong place. And since you're working with it, it's fun to work with a chipboard and do a little bit of hand work on it. And you're just going to put that piece on there. And that's why we've got this outside corner on here. Is so that you can just line it up and not have to worry about it meeting or anything like that. Or leaving a brown area of your chipboard. Don't have to worry with that. And this shelf will come back apart so that if you are doing craft shows, things like that, and you need it for display, it will lie almost flat. 
you could still put it in a box like this with this up against the back of the box not have to worry about it getting broken and your shelves can lay back down put that on there then I'm just putting on the edge of my desk and rolling it down smooshing out my glue and then the stand part is done then you've got your shelves and you've already done those and then you're just going to take your shelf and if you did option B you're going to put the short one up here okay and the this works best guys if you let this dry overnight after you've been working with it before you try to shove these shelves in there I'm just going to say that so you're just going to work with them try to get them centered up and pushed in to there. I don't have mine center, but you get the idea. Okay, so we just push that one in. Then you're going to take the second one. I'm going to try to get them even on each side. Just kind of line it up and work with your fingers. And then you're just going to push that in. Support at the back as you're pushing it. You'll be fine. It is a snug fit. It's supposed to be a snug fit because we want it to be stable. And this would be your middle shelf with option B, which would be the second longest one, and then your longest one would be at the bottom. I'm just kind of guesstimating where my centers are. Get it started. Get it started over here. And then just push your shelves in. Oops, I didn't get that one even at all. Pull that one back out. And again, make sure that your glue is dry because see, that will happen. I just tore my paper because it's still damp. You want to put this together and let it dry overnight before you start shoving these shelves together. This one I did that with and I didn't have that problem, okay, because I let it dry overnight. You don't want to work with damp chipboard. You'll break it down. Okay, and that's basically all there is to it. That's it. That's how quick and easy that chipboard shelf is, guys. So again, all you're going to do is make sure you let it dry overnight, let your stand dry overnight, let your shelves dry overnight, and here's a tip. Put your shelves because they're damp. I didn't do that one. I did these. And you can see the difference. See how this one kind of curves a little bit down? And that's from the dampness. But these others I put a book on and that kept them flat as they dried. So put your paper on, put a heavy book on them, and let those sit and dry overnight. Okay? And then let your shelf dry by itself overnight and then put it together. Okay? And then you're just going to place your Nouveau drops, whatever it is that you're on the corner of your desk so that they're there in reach. This It will hold a ton of them, guys. I didn't do anything to try to keep them off the back because I wanted them to be able to use them for display shelves, things like that, at a craft show as well. But they will hold tons of your Nouveaux and even your little Cricut cuties. Okay. And I promise, guys, I have not given up on the box for you guys. Um, I posted in the Patreon group. I know that that was supposed to be last night. And this one is just put together as a prototype to make sure it works. And you can see all my seams and hinges. And that's because I just used 12 by 12 paper that I had on hand to, to cover it, put it together, doing my measurements. 
it actually goes together with 12 by 24 paper because you're going to need that 12 by 24 paper and then you're going to put your decorative pieces on top. Um, so that being said, you're going to need some 12 by 24 to do this project and mine has not come yet. We all know that we're patiently waiting on our shippers. They're doing the best that they can. Cricut's doing the best they can and it will come. It's just taking it longer for me to get it. So make sure if you're planning on doing that chipboard card box with me that you go ahead now and order your 12 by 24 paper so that when we do the project you have it and you won't have to worry about waiting on the shipping for it. Because I'm going to postpone it. I'm going to postpone it um, for... Not this next Monday, but the next Monday. Hopefully my paper will be there here by then, and it will give you guys time to get your paper as well. Oh, thanks, Louise. I love the little box. I can't wait till it actually is put together properly. But you can see the panels on the inside. That was a test. I didn't even put a panel there yet. Um, but it does need 12 by 24 paper, so you don't have these gaps, and it holds your chipboard in. It has to be hinged properly to work properly. Yeah, I love it. I love it, Diana. Uh, but we are going to need, like I said, you're going to need some 12 by 24 paper for this little box to work properly for us. I could probably piece it with some 12 by 12, but then we would have areas that just wouldn't look quite right. <laughs> so. Did anybody have any design space questions? Anything that you need answered for tonight? I hear you, Louise. I thought I had some, and I don't know if I used it all, if I just can't find it, or if I thought I ordered it and didn't order it, but I do have an order in now, and it is on the way. You're going to need the paper for that one, Diane, 12 by 24 paper. They used to sell it in the craft stores, but now the only place I know that I can get it is Cricut. That's the only place I've been able to find it. And you'll want a color that is uh, going to match the paper that you're going to use for it. Okay? I don't know if that link will come up and allow you to use it or not, but I put it in there. There's a link for Cricut down below. When you shop my links, guys, it does earn me a small commission. I greatly appreciate that. Um, I appreciate your love and support that you guys show me very, very much. Um, but, yeah, get get a color that's – choose what color you're going to want to make your box or your papers – and your 12 by 24 paper will need to match because you will see pieces of it and parts of it. Um, and it's going to hinge your box together. It's not letting you save your favorites. Do you mean your favorite materials, Diana, or do you mean um, favorite in design space, favorite projects? Let's pop over there. A uh, newspaper will tear, Linda. It won't. You won't be able to hinge it. Well, well, you probably could if you did several layers, but the inks on it might bleed through to your pretty papers. So that that could be an issue there. Newspaper inks do funny things. I didn't think magazine uh I don't know. Maybe I could try a, ooh, a magazine. Now, that might be an idea. I'll check into that, Linda. Magazine paper is different. Magazine paper might work. 
All right, so your materials. So when you come in over here, Diana, you're like, I'm just going to place a circle in here. And let's say, well, there we go, make it. And now you're going to come to continue. And this is where you would select your material. And you can see my favorites in here. Let's just, now I have my 12 favorites. Those are the max. You can't do more than 12, okay? But here are my 12 favorites. If you go into popular, you'll see all of the popular. I don't save my popular in my favorites because Cricut has control of these. So if they're in here, I'm not going to save it to my favorites. I'm going to browse all material. And let me see, right here, corrugated cardboard. That's not one of my favorites. If I click on it, and it's going to say I can only save up to 12. So it's going to tell me. If you're getting that message, you'll need to come in here. Let me just, let me take off foil iron on. So now I only have 11. So let me browse and I'm going to get this corrugated and I'm going to select it and there it is. I just clicked off of it. Yeah, if you clear your cache, that it's hap it happened to me, Diana, so I was going to see if it was still doing it to me and it's not. Clear your cache, your application cache. Um, if you come over to the group, Cricut Maker Projects, we can give you that and uh, walk you through and help you with clearing your application cache on your computer. Now, I did not clear my application cache to get mine to work, but I did have to clear my, um, what did I clear? It wasn't that. I cleared out all of my favorites and then just redid them, and it took. I had to save it like two to three times to make it take, but then all of a sudden it just saved it. you cleared your browser cache or your application cache because there is a difference guys your applicate your browser cache are going to go up into the browser and clear history um, or, and cookies and things like that the application cache is totally different let me pull that up for you Let me get that link right there. Some things we can try. It's probably not going to let me post this link, but I will get it to you. If you message me, I will send it to you so that you can do it. But that is the link for um, clearing the application cache. Let me just bring this over. I'm going to go over right here. When you come over to Cricut with this link, you have to choose if you're on a Mac or a Windows computer, and it will walk you through the steps for clearing the cache on. It took forever, and the tech gave it the link to it. Okay. Are you in popular when you try to do that? Oh, thank you, Jamie. Um, hmm. I don't know what other... Did Diana, did you do the... Um, they had us do that view thing. What was that, Jamie? It was uh, go to the top corner of the screen and select view and force reload. So that might help, Diana, from your design space window. Uh, you're not going to see it on this because I'm using two monitors. Up at the top, you'll see view. And if you click view, then um, it should have a force reload. Yes, I'm popular right here. If you if you see my screen right here, I can't unsave any of these. 
it's not going to let me. Oops, let me hit cancel. You have the Cricut Popular Materials. Right here you have at the top Favorites and Popular. You can't change any of the Populars. They had you do that first. Diana, try um, going to the web browser version and do it and see if that will clear it out and let you do it. Instead of from the app, that might help. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kofi supporter. Here is the link, Diana, to um, the web version. And see if it will allow you to do it in there. There may be something, there may be something stuck. Because that's what happened to me. I, I just undid all of them and redid it, and it, then it didn't take. And so I went back in and I redid them all, and it took. So it could be a glitch in the internet. It could be a glitch in the thing. And also make sure that you're in design that your um, your desktop application is five point eight point one five. Make sure that you have the current version. But maybe if you go and set them in the web version, then that will reset your desktop app version and clear that out for you, whatever's got it hanging up. Okay, any other questions, guys? All right, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Enjoy your display shelf file. Um, show me how you decorated yours. It's, I want to see some stamping on some of them and maybe even some embossing powders and emb heat emboss them. Maybe some foils. I can't wait to see what you guys do because you don't have to cover them with paper. You could absolutely cut it, ink your edges, toss on some stamping, and be done. So I want to see some of the what you guys do with those. Yay! Yay, Diana. Welcome aboard. We're, we're happy to have you. We're happy to have all of our viewers. Thank you so much to all my Kofi and Patreon supporters, my YouTube members. Thank you so very much. Special thank you to my moderators. Guys, they work super hard for you, and they are the best out there. I'm telling you, we have the best admin team on the planet. So thank you, guys. Love you, and I will catch you on Friday, I believe, as our next live. Um, just to make sure, let me pull up the calendar for you guys. Just so we can be doubly sure. And you can find the calendar also in announcements in the group, Cricut Maker Projects or Crafting with April, whatever group you're in. Um, yes, we are live on no we're not live this friday that's right i have uh something to do we are live next monday we're live on next monday and wednesday all three days next week i know it's memorial day you guys are okay with me because of covid19 i usually wouldn't go live on a holiday that's why the flag is in there um, but if you guys are okay with it, I'm okay with it. Um, I don't believe we're going to do anything because of COVID. We're going to be at home. So you guys let me know if you, if you want to postpone it till Tuesday, I can do that. We can go Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, or I'll just leave it at Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
But that's why I didn't do this Friday in case people were doing things with family for that weekend. So you guys let me know. You'll be home. Okay. All right. I'm just going to let... I'm just going to leave it for um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday this coming week. That way you guys will have three, um, three lives. We'll have three projects next week. So you guys take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you on Monday.